Welcome to another Lumion 8 live stream tutorial guys. This is Chris Welton from C Welton Design and in this tutorial we're going to cover the new 4K rendering output in Lumion 8. So really this is quite simple. There's a lot I'm going to go into some details talking about what this really means for us in Lumion. But I'm going to go I'm going to start with the simple first. So let's go ahead and jump into Lumion here. This is one of the example scenes here and to put it really you know quickly when we go to render our clips basically 4k is a button it's you know we've always had these resolutions small HD 720p 1080p 1440p and now we have our button here it works as simply as hitting render and it will take longer as expected because it is four times the resolution 1080 and two times the resolution of quad HD but I'm gonna talk about what this really means though first off I'm in image sequence right now three star doesn't matter what the frame rate is I'm just gonna render out one frame <clears throat> and so please excuse me guys I got still a little cold here going on but I'm gonna render 1080p super fast you know I'm not timing this as a metric I'm just gonna compare these guys side by side 1440p just a little bit slower this is kind of a preview and 4k just a bit slower alright so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Photoshop here. I'm going to drop all these onto one, onto this one image here. Now, Photoshop is, I'm just using this as a tool to compare. Photoshop is scaling them all to fit, but they are not the same. So, first off, I have 4K, 1440, and 1080. So, I'm going to turn those 4K and 1440p off. And this is just going to give you an idea of the detail level that we're getting. So looking at this door at 1080p, you know, we got a big scene, a big shot right here. When we zoom in, you can see the door, the detail starts to really break away because of the resolution. In fact, we're seeing the pixels right there. Those are the pixels. So we'll switch to 1440p. We see the pixels here. A little bit cleaner. And when we switch to 4K, things start to get really clean. I think I might be doing this. So, basically, if this is a completely new concept to you, 4K means clear image. And if I were to scale this, a 4K image really fits right about here. Or a 1080 fits this, this much on a 4K. 4K is literally four times the resolution here. So we're going to get that extra bit of clarity we're looking for in our renderings if we really need it. But I'm going to tell you that 4K, you know, there, Lumion's offering so many effects. There's so many great things I like to add that my render times are already kind of long with 1080. And that's just because I have really heavy models and substance textures. And so for me, <clears throat> I don't think, you know, 4K is something I'm really excited about, but I'll be honest, the render times, sometimes they don't work. It, sometimes it gets a little, is a little long, but I'm glad they have it as an option. On my big, big projects, 4K is, <laughs> I mean, I did some testing and it's, you know, it's about, I don't know, anywhere between three and five times as long. There's so many factors. I, I did a... I did a test, a spreadsheet on Excel, try to get some metrics to be able to tell you exactly how much longer it takes to render. Unfortunately, I think Lumion's a little too complex to get real simple numbers because of the, there's so many <coughs> other factors, other effects, and things that play a big role, just as big of a role in render times and, than just the resolution. But yeah, expect a much longer render time, and in fact, if you do not have six gigs of memory 
of VRAM, they call it, on your graphics card, this will say, it'll say you need, uh, it'll be grayed out, and it'll say not enough RAM to render. So you have to have at least 6 gigs of VRAM, and that's something, I mean, if you open Lumion, you'll find out right away. But if you're still waiting to upgrade till 8, it's something to take a look at as well. You can figure it out looking up your graphics card, and whatever machine you have. It, and that's just telling you how intense it is. And, and I mean intense, I mean it feels like it turns Lumion up to 11 because when it renders at 4K, everything, it's, it, it's, it's working really hard. I'm harder than normal. But I want to talk about why we will render out to this. And it, it almost sounds like I'm you know, talking bad about it. Like, oh, it's not worth it. It's, it's going to take a long time. It, it's worth it. But you just have to judge your own time and what you're going to use it for. If you just want to hit that button just to have the best, highest rendering you can get out of your, out of your project, you know, go ahead and do it. But just understand that there's, you know, if you're working on a timeline, if you're working on a, a due date, uh, it's j just know that this takes a long time and it's pretty hard on your computer to render all that out but I'm going to talk about why you would render this out you know what I've noticed <coughs> excuse me watching a lot of um, YouTube content YouTube channels there's some channels out there who've gone ahead and they they've gotten they're filming in 8k they bought these really really expensive 8k cameras that they just that they just upload to 4K on YouTube, sometimes even 1080. But they did, you know. A lot of people asked them why, why you, why are you shooting at in 8K, and it didn't make sense to me either. And then they they went ahead and explained about the advantages of when you shoot at 8K with the goal of exporting to 4K. Um, there's a lot of a, a lot of advantages and freedom it gives you in post production. Now Lumion's and when I mean post-production, I talk about video editing, like Premiere. Now, Lumion is kind of... Lumion doesn't require post-production, which is awesome. I like to add post-production myself when I cut my when I cut my clips. And I, I, I can play with these clips. I can reverse them. I can speed them, slow them down <clears throat> after they're rendered. And so I like that. It's definitely not something everyone needs to do. But I was going to... I just wanted to show off... You know, the, the advantage of, of running at a higher resolution, like 4K, even though maybe you're going to just export to 1080p, is the ability, just like we were looking at this Photoshop file, if we can zoom in this far in our clip and then in our shot, we, we do this. Let's turn it off. You know, we can zoom in this close, in this big scene. We can zoom in and this could be in our shot. And it still looks clear. And then you, maybe you've seen a shot where it looks like they're recording someone from behind with a big scene and all of a sudden it cross fades into a closer up shot. It almost looks like a separate camera. And realistically they're just, you know, fading from a big high resolution shot and then they zoom in. And because they but because of the high resolution they can zoom in. And so, you know, if I'm not confusing everyone, I did an example here just for fun. I'm gonna let this play out. It's about a minute long, but this is straight from the Farnsworth house, and I rendered a really slow slide across shot here in 4K. And then what I'm going and doing is I'm kind of explaining, I'm doing what I explained and showing it off here where I'm taking all these different clips in post-production from that one rendered dip shot. You know, post production is a whole other topic that I'd love to cover sometime soon because I've fallen in more and more in love with it. The power you can have. And this is just my goal here is just to kind of show off what when you render at 4K, there's a lot of advantages in this way of uh, playing with some different shots. Because that resolution is so high, zooming in 200% is still 1080p. So all of those from the same rendered shot, some are reversed. Reverse the speed, so it's going the opposite way. All from, you know, a, a 10 second clip. So that's the idea. That's why you might need to render at 4K. 
why would that be interesting to you? But just understand, my warning is just understand that render times can be long. If your scenes, if your average render time on your scenes is only about like two to three hours on 1080p, you know, you, this might still work. It's still an overnight render. For me, about my really intense scenes that I do, or I'm using my substance, 4K textures, using all my VRAM and, you know, really high, high poly models, uh, my 10, you know, maxed out at 1080 with skylight and hyperlight and reflection plate. It takes about overnight, which is still great, really. It takes about overnight to render at 1080. You know, it's like a day and a half or, or like a or a half day or more for for 1440p. And just understanding that 4K for me was, you know, it's looking like almost, a, you know, most of the day, which is, you know, still OK in some in some ways. If I have time over the weekend and I really want to pump it out, I think it's worth it. It's fun. I've compared it on the 4K TV. I don't have 4K monitors here with in front of me, but I have watched it on a 4K TV. It's pretty cool. It it is noticeable slightly, and if you think that it's gonna help your project out, I say go for it. Just under, my my goal is to help understand that it's it takes a bit, and I also want to point out too. So Lumion has these five stars, which is, again, another topic I'd love to cover in more in-depth. Anti-aliasing is a topic I probably need to cover. If some people don't understand what that is, it's basically super sampling, which means when, when you render it four times anti-aliasing, it takes each pixel, takes four samples of it, and adds a little bit of blur. Eight times means it takes eight samples of the same pixel, 16 samples of the same pixel, to help kind of a, get that effect of a higher, a you know, smoother image. So at 1080, I, I absolutely recommend shooting for 8 or 10, 16 if you have the time. But I'll tell you, at 4K, you don't actually, you don't need much more than 3. Because anti-aliasing in a way is is trying to basically make it look more like it was, was 4K. If you render out a 4K image, and downscale it to 1080, it'll look better than a 1080 RAW would, would anyways. Because at a higher resolution, there's more information in the pixels, everything's smoother. So even if you know that your client's going to view the ultimate content in 1080 on a 1080 monitor or screen or projector, just know that if you do render at 4K and it downscales to 1080, it still will look better. But at 4K... My, in my experience, I, I did this where I rendered it out at, um, I rendered that um, Mustang animation I have, I rendered it out at 4K at three stars. Because I, di I didn't think you'd really need, I was kind of convinced that you don't need much more. I did notice though that when you're using depth of field, that might need a star more to get cleanly. I did notice some flickering, and I don't know. If it's because of the three star, which sometimes it is, this these stars really affect things like depth of field and shadows. <coughs> so that's um. So don't kill yourself by doing five star 4K. You're probably fine at three star, maybe eight if you want to be a little extra more. So that was my uh, explanation of 4K. Really, in the end. I try to explain the beginning, it's another button. You render this button, it gets this resolution, you hit this button, render, renders it out of resolution, that takes longer. So it really is that simple. I just hope I kind of explained. I just have a lot of, work a lot with resolution. It's kind of a big topic right now. I'm sure four, you've heard 4K TVs, or even in 8K now. So I'm glad Lumion gave us this option. And I hope to see some 4K content from from you guys to see on even on YouTube and yeah um, so if you'd like to see any more content like this just uh, leave it um, give it this video a like subscribe to my channel and leave any other suggestions in the comments I take note of them and I'm already writing my next few tutorials so thanks for watching guys and until next time